As the 2021 holy month of Ramadan enter its final week, the teachers' principles or values of Islam play a vital role in peaceful coexistence and national development. Welcome to another edition of the Islamic Finance Weekly, where we bring you key developments in the non-interest finance market. In this special episode, we'll be looking at the role of zakat in poverty alleviation with Dr. Haliyu Dahiru, Deputy Director of Training and Linkages of the International Institute of the Islamic Banking and Finance Bayero University, Kano. In his presentation, Dr. Ali provides insight into zakat and its principles. Uh, when you talk about zakat and sadaqa, let me start with zakat first. Zakat is compulsory and obligatory payment of a Muslims who have possessed nisab. Nisab is a minimum threshold uh, that uh, one, if one has possessed it, then he has to remove uh, uh, 2.5% or certain percentage depending on the type of the wealth uh, that he has. There is uh, cash, there is uh, gold, there is uh, uh, agricultural produce that is also zakah on animals so these are the major types of zakah uh, uh, which uh, a person has to um, uh, give out so for instance if it is a the card on cash uh, the amount the person needs to remove is 2.5 percent of the, the total and then he gives it as zakah that is as a card and the total is called the minimum which he has so he has to take 2.5 percent for this year, of course, because we have uh, some uh, differing opinion about uh, calculating zakat, uh, but altogether you see that uh, in Nigeria, zakat, the nisab of zakat is between 1.4 million naira to 1.8 million naira. So if you have such amount, so you have to uh, give out the, depending on the opinion one has taken but uh, some scholars have stated that it's better to take the minimum so that at least that will make more zakat uh, collection uh, to grow if uh, you take the minimum so once you reach that and the amount and you fulfill all other uh, requirements then you have to pay the zakat and of course there is zakat on animals uh, which um, I think it's a, uh, perhaps a topic of another day. Uh, there is zakat on agricultural produce. These are all forms of zakat. But what people must know uh, or uh, give out, and uh, of course because of the changing nature of the economy, uh, many people now have more cash than uh, other assets. So therefore, we now focus on zakat on wealth, uh, zakat on cash. The scholar also shared the values of zakat as derived from the Holy Korean and the transference of wealth from the rich to the poor. Now, zakat, like I mentioned, is uh, enshrined in the Quran. Allah says, "Awwadu billahi min shaitan rajim, khud min amwalhim sadaqatan tuqahirhum wa tuzakihim biha wa salli alayhim." He was telling the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to take out zakat from their wells, from the wells of the Muslims. Uh, it purifies them, or to the king, it cleanses them, or sell alayhim. Then when you check, you pray for them. So this is the guidance, the teachings of Islam. That if you check the, the zakat, like Islamic tax, so you don't just take and go, but you have to pray for them for Allah to bless their wells. So this is about uh, zakat. In one of the hadiths, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, uh, the Prophet sent Mu'ad bin Jabal to Yemen to collect zakat, and he told him that you take from the wealthy among them and transfer it to the poor among them. So this is to tell you that zakat is a transfer of wealth from rich people to the poor people. Unlike um, interest, riba, riba is a transfer of wealth from largely from uh, from the from the poor people to the rich people if you go and analyze how uh, riba interest is being used you will realize that it is basically transferring wealth from the low segment of the society to the higher segment of the society unlike zakat 
and that is why Allah says Allah removes all blessings from riba and he puts that blessing in sadaqat which is zakah now zakah is the third pillar of islam among the five pillars of islam zakah comes number three so this tells you the importance of zakah and interestingly it comes at the middle some scholars say that this positioning zakah at the middle it is showing the it is the economy of the ummah if you want to have a, a, a sound economy that economy should you know should ensure that zakah is collected and distributed accordingly because this we can support this position with one of the verses of the holy quran uh, where allah says uh, why is the reason why uh, zakat sadaqat charities are requested to be given is that so that the wisdom behind it is that so that the wealth will not be circulated among few individuals so you can see that zakat is very key as far as islam uh, and islamic economics is concerned it is also interesting to note that zakat has benefits with social economic implications it has a lot of benefits uh, uh, for instance, it purifies the wealth of the person and purifies himself from sins. Uh, sometimes the wealth one is accumulating. Uh, there we are some instance, instances whereby uh, perhaps some uh, maybe illegitimate earnings or an earned income knowingly or unknowingly comes into the wealth. So when zakah is removed, of course, knowingly you cannot take people's wealth just to say, I no problem, I will pay zakah later, or no, it's not like that. Sometimes it's beyond your control. Huh? Maybe you are keeping your money in the conventional banks, and then there were some interest that accumulated. You didn't know uh, there is interest in what you... So when you give out zakah, inshallah, it is expected that all this will cleanse the wealth and the person himself. And also, it, you know, it, it establishes good human relations among the people, the people, the Muslims, the, the rich people that give out zakah, you'll see that they are loved and cared by, by, by the poor people who receive zakah. So it establishes such a relationship. And uh, it also ensures the wealth circulation in the society. Uh, and uh, it uh, breaks the vicious cycle of poverty because any society, any society that takes care of zakah, all right, you will see that there will be no poverty in that society. And we have this historically, uh, Duarun Umar bin Abdul Aziz, Duarun Umar bin Khattab, whereby you don't have even a single recipient of zakah because uh, every other person, everyone is uh, satisfied and uh, he is ready to give out from his wealth. Sadako, on the other hand, also has benefit that can support citizens in the society and Islam places high premium on it. So it has a lot of benefit. Uh, similarly, uh, in uh, Sadaka, which is uh, another segment which is like uh, voluntary, Ibzaka is compulsory, so Sadaka is voluntary. Um, and uh, there are many verses in the Holy Quran that encourages Muslims to give out sadaqa, charity, 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 if you read Surah Al-Baqarah. In fact, feeding the poor, Fisa Bilallah for the sake of Allah. So this is very important. And um, uh, let me just quote one of the verses of the Holy Quran so that you can see the importance of uh, uh, sadaqa. In fact, Islam places high premium on zakah and sadaqa, where Allah says, لَيْسَ الْبِرَّ أَن تُوَلُّوا جُوهَكُمْ قِبَلَ الْمَشْرِقِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ وَلَكِنَّ الْبِرَّ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةِ وَالْكِتَابِ وَالنَّبِيِّينَ وَآتَ الْمَالَ عَلَى حُبِّهِ ذَوِ الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينَ وَابْنِ السَّبِيلِ وَالسَّائِلِينَ وَفِي الرِّقَابِ وَأَقَامَ الصَّلَاةَ وَآتَ الزَّكَاةَ وَالْمُوفُونَ بِعَهْدِهِمْ إِذَا آهَدُوا وَالصَّابِرِينَ فِي الْبَأْسَاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ وَحِينَ الْبَأْسِ أُولَئِكَ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا the meaning of this verse is that Allah mentioned in the Quran, in this Surah Al-Baqarah, uh, verse 177, 
Allah says, uh, all believers, uh, uh, He says, uh, righteousness is not whether you turn your face towards east or west, but righteousness is to believe in Allah, the last day, the angels, the books, and the prophets, and to spend wealth out of love for Him, or relatives, orphans, helpless, needy travelers, those who ask for and on the redemption of captives and to establish prayer, to pay zakah, to fulfill promises when made, to be steadfast in distress, in adversity and at the time of war. These people are the truthful and these are the pious. You can see the qualities, the qualities mentioned in the Quran. That it's not just to look at the east and the west to pray, uh, but if you are looking for the piety, it's actually in feeding the poor. It's actually in giving out what you want, what you really want, what you love, you give. Out of love, you take your wealth. All right, they take their wealth even though they love it, they give it to who? To the relatives, to the orphans, to the needy travelers, to the captives, to free the captives and the others who are needy in the society. This is a very, very uh, fundamental uh, as far as uh, giving out wealth to uh, benefit some people or the members of the society is concerned. And you can see in the verse there is uh, mentioning of Wa'ata Zakata so giving out the car and also fulfilling promises uh, is also part of it. A cited report from Islamic Research Training Institute of the Islamic Development Bank, which focused on how zakat can boost economic empowerment and goods in Nigeria. In a study conducted by Islamic Research and Training Institute of the Islamic Development Bank, JIDA, uh, in 2015, uh, called uh, Islamic Social Finance Report. Actually, it's a report uh, which I still keep my copy because I partake in this uh, study. Uh, the study it says that uh, it found that in Nigeria, all right, in Nigeria, it's one of the countries, out of the seven countries study, Nigeria, if the zakat will be mobilized fully, uh, uh, it will reach up to the moderate view. It will reach up to 2.08% of GDP, of the gross domestic product, the monetary value of all goods and services produced in the country. So if zakat could be mobilized, uh, it could reach up to this amount. And at, at the same year, the total amount of resources required to alleviate poverty of uh, uh, $1.25 dollar per day, the World Bank standard then, uh, was 1.47% of GDP. I'm quoting it in terms of percentage. 1.47% of GDP only you need to alleviate poverty of $1.25 uh, per day to have a zero level of poverty if you can use you can have 1.47 at that year uh, it would be sufficient but look at it uh, at the same year the zakat could reach up to 2.08 percent of GDP this is even moderate modest view uh, there is uh, the two extreme views one is that the card could be uh, it range between 0 0.86 to 3.1 uh, or 2 percent of GDP. So the, the extreme view uh, to the right is three, over 3 percent of GDP. But we take the moderate view so that uh, it will be easier and the middle course is always better. So that is about uh, the card and its role in the society in alleviating poverty and supporting the needy. Uh, especially during Ramadan, uh, it's a good opportunity to, to give out zakah and to give out sadaqah so that people will get uh, uh, some income to spend. We will go on a short break.
welcome back. Talking about how zakat can be deployed effectively, Dr. Ali, you explained ways it can be used to address poverty in the country. Nigeria has the, a large number of poor people, and uh, mostly uh, from the north, which are the Muslim-dominated area. And uh, you got uh, all these uh, internally displaced persons, refugees, and other poor people in the society. Uh, so how would they benefit from zakat? Yes, of course. Uh, first of all, wherever the person is, uh, maybe you should locate the zakat organization. You, you definitely have mocks. Uh, one thing I didn't mention is that some mocks actually collect zakat and distribute it to the poor. So easily you can locate mocks. And uh, yeah, I know we have some problems. We have some challenges. Uh, some we don't uh, at times we don't organize ourselves well in terms of uh, the collection. So, like for every mox, let's say Juma ad mox, I think there should be a register for the people to come and uh, register themselves as the needy. So, in case at that time when they come, there is no zakat, then uh, you know, uh, when the card comes, you can call them. But also, there are all oh, those mocks can serve as intermediaries to link persons with zakat organizations. So there are zakat organizations in many of northern states. In Gombe, we have Gombe State Zakat, Gombe Zakat, and Waka Foundation. In Kano, we have Kano State Zakat and Hubisi Commission. In Sokoto, we have Sokoto State Zakat and Endowment Commission, which is a uh, headed by one of us, one of our chair, uh, the chairman of Association of Zakat and Work Up uh, of, uh, of an, uh, operators in Nigeria, al Haji Muhammad al uh, Zamfara, and the many other states actually. So one can go to uh, register with those organizations and then some instantly they give out, some they will ask you to wait. Maybe sometimes they need for uh, maybe preparation or sometimes they need the money from government support uh, because some agencies, the government supports them so that to alleviate poverty. So this is how the, the poor people can benefit from zakat. Uh, in, those, uh, uh, in fact, in, in, in the north, in, in, in Jigawa state, for instance, you have what is called Emirate Base. I will elaborate more about this. Emirate Base Zaka, wherever you can go under, uh, um, uh, I mean, under the EMIA. So you can see the EMIAs are very close to the people. So you can register under and your location through the district head, and then you will get your zakat when uh, they have it. So these are the the means through which. Uh, the poor people would benefit from zakat. Of course, individuals, many individuals pay their zakat directly. The most important thing about zakat is making it, making the payment. Ensure that you have paid your zakat because if one doesn't pay zakat on the day of Kiyama, that wealth, that wealth that one accumulates, it will be turned out to be like a, a snake or a metal which uh, it will be used to punish the person on his neck, on his body. So it is very important that a Muslim should not allow, uh, even delay his, a payment of his zakat because he doesn't know when the time, his time will come. In his conclusion, the Islamic scholar listed various types of zakat and their applicability. At least we have uh, four types for the record, we have four types of zakat organizations in Nigeria. The first of which is state-based, state-based zakat. Like in the north, uh, when uh, after the introduction or reintroduction of Sharia in the north, in some northern states, Kano uh, Zamfara started. It, it started, and then it came up with the zakat and endowment board. Uh, Sokoto followed the suite. Kano. Uh, Jigawa, Bauchi, uh, and other some other states, they have all zakat aid, state-based zakat agencies. And then we have a uh, foundation base, such as uh, Jai's foundation, they collect zakat and distribute it. They also collect work up or uh, uh, collect work up and uh, uh, utilize it. And we have like uh, Lagos State in the south, we have Lagos Zakat and Endowment, I mean Lagos Zakat and uh, Sadaka Foundation in Lagos. 
headed by one of us also, one of our active members, Prince Suleiman Olagunju uh, and uh, uh, his team. So we have also uh, Emirate base. This Emirate base, like in Jigawa State, the five Emirates, each Emirate, in the Emir of that Emirate is the head of Zakat team. So they collect Zakat and distribute largely Zakat on agricultural produce. Also Zakat on money, uh, but uh, you realize that they do collect Zakat uh, in large quantity in the form of agricultural produce and animals. That is very good because perhaps only in Jigawa state and, uh, yeah, and Sokoto, of course, you will see large collection of Zakat on agricultural produce. And that is really setting a good example. It's one of the success stories as far as the cat uh, collection and distribution in Nigeria is concerned. And then we have individual base uh, whereby uh, or interpersonal uh, payment of the cat, uh, whereby the person distributes his cat himself without uh, having any intermediary. The problem with that approach is that uh, the, in terms of the efficiency or efficacy of uh, the effect of zakat on the receivers, sometimes it's not there. Uh, and also sometimes there are some mistakes uh, committed by the, by, the, by, the, by the zakat payer because of lack of knowledge or sometimes uh, some people take it like a tradition so they give, they circulate wealth among themselves, the rich and the rich. Sometimes they transfer wealth from one family to another and all these families are rich families. So these are mistakes. This cannot be uh, zakat actually. So they have to uh, change it and then check it. Like it's mentioned in the hadith, it's a, it's a wealth taken from the rich and transfer it to the poor. So if zakat is taken from the rich and transfer it to the to the, to the rich, then I don't know what is it actually, but I know zakat is taken from the rich and transfer it to the poor. Zakat and Sadako have the potentials to increase economic empowerment for Muslims and non-Muslims in Nigeria. From the 2012 Islamic Finance Social Report, Nigeria was listed among the seven poor countries that can benefit from the third pillar of Islam. Apart from the fact that it is the third pillar of Islam, zakat, if deployed into Nigeria's economic and financial market strategy, can transform the economy and reduce the high poverty index in the nation. It is therefore expected that key regulators like the Central Bank of Nigeria and the fiscal policy makers will work closely with non-interest finance institutions to expand the scope of zakat and sadako as tools for financial inclusion and economic empowerment. And that will be all for today. Connect with us on our website, www.washengi.com, also on our social media platform displaying on the screen. So we come your way again next week Friday. Thank you for watching and bye for now.